um, a tea element, maybe tea leaves or dry tea leaves or something like that, or just a tea bag, tea in general. Hey, how's it going and welcome to Whiskey Wins with me, Stuart. Today we've got a 25 year old whiskey by Weems Malts, um, it's called Velvet Fig and I believe they've released this previously uh, just as Velvet Fig, I don't think they gave it an age statement before but this time they've decided to give it a 25 year old age statement. It's a blended whiskey matured exclusively in sherry casks, bottled at 42.3% ABV and it ranges between 100 and 125 pound. I picked this up for £99 on a sale, um, so a bit of a bargain. Stevie, my girlfriend's dad, he'd originally bought it, I tried his, and then decided why not at that cheaper price for a 25 year old. It's a marriage of 20 casks, 5 hailing from Speyside and Highland regions, and I believe these casks were um, distilled, filled or whatever in 1994. Um, the released this released in 2020, so that makes it 26. Uh, that cask, and then also they had 15 casks from an unpeated um, Isla distillery, which turns out to be Bunahaven. And these casks were distilled in 1988, so it makes that spirit 32 year old, um, if my math is right. Quick math. So you've got 32 year old stuff in there, and 26 or 25 and 31, if you like. Um, if you will. So it begs the question whether they realised the Buna Haven cast were strong enough to release on their own or what, I, I'm not sure, I can't assume anything. But maybe they just wanted to blend it together and found that that was a better um, marriage rather than releasing a single uh, Buna Haven distillery, a single malt. So they've recently released a Buna Haven at 28 year old, could be similar casks. Uh, they, they, they're a, a that in it as well. And that was rather cheap. They brought that out for about £150. So 25 year old, 100 to £125. Quite a good price. Uh, like I said, it's 42.3% ABV. I don't think it's coloured and I'm pretty sure it's not chill filtered because it does get a bit of a haze. But it doesn't say it on the bottle. There is a box, but once again, uh, we don't really care about the box. I probably should have used it for the, the video just to double check the, the um, chill filtered and colouring, but it's up in the loft and I couldn't be bothered getting it down. Uh, we'll get down to the whiskey, I might pour a little bit. So it is cheap for what it is I think, 25 year old, but then again it's not the the price, the age, it's, it's how the whiskey actually tastes and whether the whiskey's worth that price. Uh, so let's just get straight down to the nose and the palate. The nose is a sweet and sour, it's um, almost like a Kung Po dish from the Chinese. There's some tart, uh, like fruits, I'm going to say uh, blackcurrant and I want to say like a dark black cherry or something like that. There's a little bit of a, a dunnage uh, feel to this, a little bit of a, a stour, um, which is just a Scottish word for dust, so it's a bit stewy, a bit dusty. And I'm not sure whether that might be from the aged or the old Buna Haven casks because I've found it before when you get older spirit, older whiskey, it does sometimes have quite a dusty smell to it. Whether that's because the bottles have been sitting or something to do with the casks, I'm not sure, but you do get a rather dusty smell in this. Yeah, it's, it's sturdy, it's sweet, it's sour, it's a little tart, it's floral, uh, I'm trying to think if there's anything, maybe like a heather. Um, nice purple Scottish heather. Very complex in the nose, very um, deep, rich, a lot going on. But it's tied well together, it's not higgledy-piggledy, it's not um, jumbled all about. There's a very, 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 um, that's bad grammar, but there's, <laughs> there's a rather subtle funk to this, whether that be from the sherry or the whiskies used, the highlands and the space sides. But there is a slight funk. Not anything drastic, nothing um, dramatic or anything like that. It's just very slight, very um, towards the end of the nose. 
It's a bit of a struggle to pick it out, but it's definitely there. There's a funkiness, uh, maybe to go along with that dunnage, that warehouse type smell. But yeah, fantastic nose so far, great, a lot going on. You could probably sit with this for a, a while and get more and more. Uh, with it being 42.3%, I don't think adding water would help too much. It might change things up, but we're not going to add water. I usually don't add water, uh, and I really should because uh, I'm a bit of a hypocrite. So the palette, it's rather sweet initially with toffee, <laughs> toffee and frosting sugar, something like that, or castor sugar. There's, it's quite watery on the palate, unfortunately, but there's still a nice oily brine on the palate, a little bit of salty savouriness, rolled oats uh, with salt, like a, a bitter flapjack, if that makes sense. But with it being watery, that briny oiliness kind of makes up for the watery, watery uh, element of it because it, it soaks the mouth in. You can't really say soak and say it's watery, but I suppose you could. It covers the mouth, coats the mouth in this oily, briny film. So that kind of makes up for the wateriness. But yeah, it is a little bit watery on the palate. That dusty dunnage, warehouse, whatever you want, element is back on the palate. Just when some of the flavours dissipate. It is a little bit fruity on the palate. Some dried fruits there, maybe prunes and things like that. But I feel like the rolled oats, saltiness, bitterness, I feel like that's more the defining characteristic at the moment. But yeah, there is still some sweet notes there, like I said initially, the toffee and the uh, castor sugar. Not a lot of fruits, like I said, dry fruits, but not a lot of fruit on the palate. The nose is definitely, um, I don't know, maybe filled, filled me into thinking there was going to be a lot more on the palate, but it's a little bit uh, less than the nose. Um, so the, the finish, finish is for sure short. Uh, there's dried plums, there are dried figs, a little bit of like um, a tea element, maybe tea leaves or dried tea leaves or something like that, or just a tea bag, tea in general, without the milk. A real tannin flavour, quite woody, you get a lot of the wood coming through in the palette. Uh, dusty again, the, the dust elements went from the nose right through to the finish, and it's not a bad thing at all, I do really enjoy it. The dusty element. Some dried uh, cherries on the finish as well. More fruit coming through in the finish now, dried cherries, like I said, dried plum, possibly prune there as well, and the herbally aspect of the tea. A little bit of a letdown from the nose to the palate, to the finish. The finish is obviously the least um, defining. <laughs> Why do I always screw this word up? It's the um, least attractive aspect of this whiskey. I can't think, think of the word. I can't think what the word should be. Um, but yeah, the, the finish is where this whiskey kind of gets let down. The palate, like I said, a little bit watery, not too um, enticing compared to the nose, but still, as a whole, the whiskey as a whole, it is actually quite a good whiskey. Quite a sessionable whiskey, uh, it's definitely scoffable, it's tasty, but yeah, a little bit of a, a, a com different comparison from the nose, palate and finish. So, would I buy it again? I think now that I've had it, I wouldn't buy it again. Uh, would I recommend it? I definitely recommend it. I think it's a nice tasty dram, nice uh, winter dram, nice sessionable dram to share with friends. It's one to have with family, it's one that your mum could have, your grand could have, um, your dad. If your dad doesn't drink whiskey, anyone, my dad doesn't drink whiskey, I reckon he'd like this. It could be a, a, a coming together whiskey for me. Round by the campfire, whatever, anything like that, I think this is a shareable whiskey. Um, and it will attract a lot of people into whiskey if they were to have it. So, what if I said, I am just rambling, would I buy it again? Probably not. Do I think it's worth it? That's the last one. So, I wouldn't buy it again. I'd recommend it and do. I think it's worth it. 25 year old, £99 for what I paid, even £125. Is it worth it? I think it is. <laughs> Although it is a little watery, the nose is fantastic the nose really brings this whiskey up and as a whole it is a great whiskey so i do think it's worth it especially 99 pound that 25 year old um i do think it's worth it maybe 125 pound it might not be as worth it 
but I still reckon if you would pay that price, you'd enjoy this whiskey, especially if you share it. Um, I've really hooked on to that fact. I think it's a sharing whiskey one to have with everyone. So that's all I've got to say. I think it's a good, good whiskey, um, or a great whiskey really. Weems have done great with their pricing, with their vatting, uh, compared to other distilleries and that. But what, what they're doing at the moment, I've really got a lot of time for. So yeah, there's a little bit of a sucking up. Thanks for watching. I've been Stuart. This has been Whiskey Wims. I'll see you later.